Abigail Adams, we were there too. By Abigail and Caitlin Brookerson. As a young girl, Abigail never had a traditional education, as most girls didn't. She aimed her brother always going to school and coming home from it every day. Her father had a large library with many books about science, arts, and language. Her favorite was always writing and or reading. She'd be in the library when not helping her mother with the cooking, cleaning, sewing, or baking. As the oldest daughter of the Smith family, Abigail was always the one usually helping her mother with the task. Meeting John Adams As a young woman, she met a man, John Adams, who enjoyed arguing with Abigail, having a vast knowledge and language. John was a graduate from Harvard in the degree of law. Abigail's mother wasn't fond of John, but years later, Abigail and John were married. After two years of being married, John became the first vice president, giving Abigail the title of first second lady Abigail and John Adams children Abigail and John Adams had four children during their marriage including Abigail Nabby Adams who was born July 14 1765 and died on August 15 1813 at the age of 48 their second child was John Quincy Adams born July 11, 1767, and died on February 23, 1848, at the age of 81. Their third child was Grace Susanna, who was nicknamed Sucky. She was born on December 28, 1768, and died at the very young age of two on February 4, 1770. Their fourth child was Thomas Adams, who was born on September 15, 1774, and died on March 13, 1834 at the age of 49. They also had one more child named Elizabeth, but she was stillborn in 1775. The Letters They Wrote After John and Abigail became President and First Lady Adams, John was always away on business trips. Abigail wrote many letters to John during their time apart. Women deserve rights, too. Abigail often spoke up for married women's property rights and more. She believed that women should have content themselves to bring the role of the decorous companions to their husbands, saying, do not put such unlimited power to the hands of husbands. Remember, all of the men would be trained if they could. In particular, care and affection is not paid to the ladies, we are determined to foment a rebellion and will not hold ourselves bound by any laws in which we have no voice or representation. More letters. In a letter she wrote to John, she said, I long to hear that you have declared an independency and the way in the new order of laws which suppose it will be necessary for you to make. And from what she wrote, John didn't take it seriously. I was a letter to her friend, Mercy o Otis Warren. She asked in the letter to petition Congress establishing some laws that favor women. Did we get our rights? Years later, the Congress finally decided to state the law of women's rights. Abigail Adams is now known to be one of the main reasons we have rights today. From her informing other women, she had received the rights for women. President John Quincy Adams John Quincy Adams was the eldest son of the Adams family. As a young boy, John looked up to his mother as a role model, and she was the one that influenced him through most of his life. Later, when he became a graduate of Harvard, he went into the running of becoming a president, just like his father. He won the election, making him the sixth president of the United States. How We Remember Abigail Adams Mr. 
The stone cairn atop Quincy's Pin Hill marks the spot where Abigail Adams and young John Quincy Adams watched the burning of Charleston during the Battle of Bunler Hill. The site is free and open to the public. The First Spouse Coin Abigail Adams' first spouse coin were introduced into the United States Mint on June 19, 2007. The coins are number two in the series to honor American first spouses. A few important quotes. How difficult the task to quench the fire and the pride of private ambition, and to sacrifice ourselves and all our hopes and expectations to the public wheel. How few have souls capable of so noble an undertaking. Learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with a door and attended with diligence. I am more and more convinced that a man is a dangerous creature, and that power, whether vested in the many or a few, is ever grasping, and like the grave, cries, Give! Give! It really is mortifying, sir, when a woman, possessed of a common share of understanding, considers the difference of education between the male and female sex even in those families where education is attended to. Nay, why should your sex wish for such a disparity in those whom one day attend for companions and associates? Pardon me, sir, if I cannot help sometimes suspecting that this neglect arises in some measures from an ungenerous jealousy of rivals near the throne. In conclusion, Abigail Adams Smith died at the age of 74 in Quincy, Massachusetts. She lived a full happy life with her husband John, the only person she ever married. Without her influence on John, women still might not have some of the rights we have today.